Good afternoon, everybody. Mike here doing my intro a little bit different today, just chilling on the tailgate because it is absolutely beautiful out. So I hope you guys are having an awesome day. I definitely am. It's like 75 degrees out for the first time since probably early September here. And it's just fun. You know, you can get out, cruise with the windows down. And I don't know, why are car guys like that? You know, all car guys and girls, I should say, Pretty much, you know, when it's hot out, we cruise with the windows down all the time. Rarely AC, unless you're like boiling hot, then you put on the AC, but otherwise windows down. But anyway, enough about the weather and the windows. Let's talk about the Duramax because that's of course what this video is, a Duramax update. So as you can see exterior wise, the only thing that I have done here that really stands out is the antennas, which we'll get to in a second, but let's go ahead and start with the engine mods. And if you guys remember from the video, little update video I made about a week ago, um, I talked about how unfortunately I didn't get to film any of this stuff because it was being done at the same time that my Hellcat was getting its muffler delete done and I kind of had to pick one or the other I ended up picking the Hellcat just because you know this is all basic stuff anyway so the air intake and the turbo inlet so this is the intake of course and the inlet I actually took the, that all apart myself the stock parts it was really easy simple takes you about uh, 20 minutes the only thing that hung me up like all this little stuff It's just a bunch of screws and little bolts and, and clamps and everything like that It's really easy. The only thing that hung me up is that the stock um, Air box had a screw attached to the fender and I had everything else disconnected And I could not figure out for the life of me like why won't this air box come out? And then I finally figured out that it does have a, a bolt down there on the side But anyway, this is the SB intake really cool. I like how it, it looks in the truck I went with all black pieces just because you know, it looks a little bit more low-key gives it kind of a factory look but also just really cleans it up and of course you'll notice that uh, with the PCV reroute you can get rid of the resonator as well so you remember the resonator is this big uh I don't know what you even, well, the resonator, but it just looks like a big plastic thing and it says 6.6 .6 liter Duramax on it. Um, so we got rid of that. Uh, PCV reroute is installed. And as you can see right here is my EGR delete underneath here. We'll go, we'll circle around here to the side. And you can see that's where the EGR cooler used to be right there. Uh, point to it. Hopefully you can see pretty well. It's a little bit later in the afternoon, but anyway, so you can buy a blocker plate for that. We just fabricated one and welded it on. It just, you know, cheap and easy. Didn't buy the blocker plate. Um, and then you can see the PCV reroute in the back as well, but pretty simple and straightforward. Like I said, I took apart this whole thing myself and I was going to film it. What I wanted to do was take it apart, get a good feel for it and then film it that way. You know, I wouldn't be like stumbling on camera for two hours if something held me up, which luckily it didn't. But anyway, um, you know, it didn't take long. The only thing was, like I said, it didn't make a whole lot of sense for me to redo it because when I took it to the shop in order to drive it there for them to do the EGR delete, because that's a little bit more involved. You have to, um, drain the coolant you got to do some other things so I took was gonna take that to a shop because I didn't really have the time um, on that particular day so taking it all apart the intake the turbo the turbo inlet all that stuff you got to take apart you got to take off a lot of stuff let's just put it that way to, to get the EGR uh, delete in there and it didn't make sense for me to do that and then film it put it back together take it to the shop and then have it you know all taken apart again you know you know what i'm saying just to do it and then just to have it redone and taken apart again so i ended up just having the shop do it all so unfortunately i didn't get any of that uh good stuff on camera but like i said it took me about 15 minutes for anybody if you buy an intake in the turbo inlet and you want to do it yourself go for it it, take, it literally takes 15 minutes it's super easy the egr delete is a little bit more involved but i think you can handle that too like i said i didn't really have the time and there, there were some other pieces um you know that were a little bit difficult i would think but it, it's not the end of the world i think you could pretty much do it it's all pretty simple stuff the directions were good and what i will do is put a link to the video where i go over all these pieces in the description in case you didn't see that video that way you can see all of the you know the links to them in case you want to buy them and all the parts and the names and everything and the websites where I purchased them. So anyway, that is all the engine modifications. Pretty simple, straightforward, but we're all done here. This, oh, and I also replaced the coolant. Since they drained the coolant for the EGR, I just had all the coolant drained and put new one, uh, put new coolant in just in case, you know, the truck is 11 years old. And even though it only has 13,000 miles on it, you know, I'm guessing that the coolant was probably never changed. So I just went ahead and did that as well. So I put in there some GM uh, Dex Cool, which I've heard mixed reviews on that, but whatever. It's from the factory. I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. So anyway, that's all the engine modifications. Pretty straightforward, pretty easy. And that is it. That's the only things that I have planned for the engine. I really wanted to do just the stuff that makes it 
you know, as reliable as possible as, you know, give it some free up some power a little bit too, but that's pretty much it. You know, I'm not going for like anything crazy here. Maybe someday, you know, everyone talks about doing like a twin turbo or something. Look, I would love to, but you know, like this is being a daily driver. I don't want to go down that road, <laughs> but um, you know, maybe someday when I have the free time. But anyway, let's talk about the CB antennas for a second. So as you can see, I got these installed and actually let's back down here a little bit so you can see, I got them pretty even and you can see that they line up pretty even. I didn't really, you know, take the time to sit here and measure out, measure it out or anything, but you can see they're pretty much, I, I slanted them forward just a little bit. That way, um, at highway speeds, they don't bend as far backwards if you tilt them forward a little bit um, to start out with, give them that angle. But anyway, this was a pretty uh, easy job. What I wanted to do was, actually, let's get down here again, sorry. Um, but anyway, what I wanted to do on my other truck, I had them tucked in behind the bed. Um, like here and I loved it because it was super like hidden. You couldn't see anything the wiring. It was all hidden It was all you saw was the antenna sticking up um, I could not do that with this truck and I couldn't figure out why I was like well, how did I do it on the other one? I realized that my older truck didn't have the sliding rear window and I guess because of that in the back that this sticks out really far So I didn't have room to mount if I was gonna mount it um, the antenna didn't have room to clear this unfortunately so I couldn't tuck them in behind the bed uh, between the bed and the cab like the other one I had to put them back here but it was pretty uh, easy and straightforward it took me forever to get them lined up just because they they just weren't this um, actually this here kind of slants like it's not totally straight it's kind of like this so I had to put in these washers here and fabricate it all up and get the angle right and it it was supposed to be like an hour job, ended up taking like three hours, but it is what it is. I'm really happy with it. The wires just go back tucked in there and then that will be wired to a CB at some point. But um, you know, these are wired up good. I think it looks good. I'm happy with the job. You know, I'm not a professional as you can see here where I painted, I painted these parts and then I took a wrench to it and basically ruined my paint job, but I can redo that um, at some point. You know, and the washer look, you know, it looks a little, bit um i don't know what it looks a little jerry rigged that's for sure but but it works and uh, you know they're in now and i really like the look of the antennas and of course they're going to be functional as well and actually the off-road place around here which is roush uh, creek which a lot of my pa viewers will probably recognize that name um they actually require the whole cb thing i actually got to get a fire extinguisher as well um so i needed that for for anything that i'm doing as far as off-roading is concerned and i like the look too so that's pretty much it as far as the exterior goes again you kind of give it this good angle i just the antennas look cool they just look so cool i like them i don't know i'm sure i'm gonna get hate for them because let's be honest you don't need two you only need one i know that but two looks better right and i'm an ocd guy you gotta have one on each side you can't have one antenna sticking up and not the other one so um that's about it as far as the antennas are concerned and one more thing i have been keeping myself very busy with this truck especially taking advantage of all the great weather we've been having so i've started the undercoating process here and you can see i have been very busy now keep in mind this is a 2005 um northern truck and I would say this is pretty damn good under here. I don't know how well the lighting is gonna be, but I sanded all this down, um, you know, had it down pretty much to bare metal. There wasn't a ton of rust on this piece up here to begin with. I don't know how that scratch got there. I must've run over something, I don't know. Probably killed somebody and don't even realize it, whatever. Um, but, but anyway, you know, this looks awesome under here. You can see the uh, diff in the back and everything. Um, you know, I got about up to the gas tank. So you can see underneath the bed there, really clean i've just been having fun you know out here sanding it painting it having fun with it in general i've been doing a lot of work on the truck and uh I've, i'm really pleased with the progress on that you know this looks awesome under here this is one of the cleanest trucks i've ever seen so it was nice to have you know i didn't have to like sand through eight inches of rust but at the same time you know, i did some good sanding i got about six layers of paint on there and then a rubberized uh, undercoating on top of that and you'll also notice that i've started painting my exhaust because I didn't like the fact that, see, that's what the exhaust looks like. Actually, let's get you a better angle here. You can walk around and see it. So the exhaust normally just has that shitty, you know, just bare steel, uh, not even color, it's just, it's just bare steel. So I'm starting to paint it black. I got about up to there, you can see right by the shock absorber. Um, and I'm gonna do the rest of it at some point, but that's the only other thing I have planned. Um, this I gotta clean up a little bit. You can see some rust here and uh, on the frame as well i gotta sand that down but it's it's overall really clean as you would expect i mean it's a really low mileage truck so there's not a ton of rust to begin with but definitely want to clean up a couple more places here and there but that is pretty much it as far as all the sanding and um 
you know, just underbody stuff is concerned. I also forgot to mention that I have one clip that I recorded a little bit earlier today, and let's cut to that clip right now. Big baby, baby, oh. So also in this update video, I wanted to uh, talk about the wheels and tires for a second because in my Hellcat uh, muffler delete video from a few days ago, a lot of people were saying, you know, hey, we see the wheels and tires and everything. And I already did include that in an update video, but apparently a lot of people missed it. So I will include the link for that video in the description, but we'll go over them uh, today as well, just in case, you know, a lot of people, it seems as though they didn't see it. So yeah, these are the wheels and tires that I went with. And I do have five, four out here. Uh, and then the one in the house from the update video, I got five, so I would have a full size spare uh, that I can carry around with me in case, you know, anything happens, rather be prepared. But what I went with was a 35 inch tire, 35 uh, by 12 and a half, and this is a Toyo Open Country MT, uh, MT meaning mud terrain. So these tires are supposed to be really good and they look awesome, I think it's gonna be great. And the wheels, of course, are fuel hostage wheels um, in black. The size is 20 by 12. So you can see they are awfully aggressive, a very deep lip here. Um, gonna look really, really cool. Now they are gonna stick out from the truck quite a bit. The fender of the truck's probably gonna be like, you know, here. So you're gonna have a few inches sticking out from the truck and that's the stance I like. The only problem, I mean, it looks awesome and that's why I'm doing it, you know, I'm all about who cares about the legality, right? But it, I might get hassled by the cops, we'll see. So I might have to get some big fender flares or something. We'll see at some point, we'll see how it goes. If I, if I have them on for a week and I get pulled over, you know, obviously I'll do something about it. If I have them on for like six months and I get hassled one time, just, you know, we'll let it go. But anyway, those are the wheels and tires and now back to the regular update. So you saw the wheels and tires that everyone is so excited about. And of course I am too, because, you know, looking at the truck as it sits right now, that's the last major thing that is gonna be done to it. And then it's pretty much gonna be it. And of course, wheels and tires, you just bolt those on. So the big thing is the lift. So my timeline for that is a little bit farther down the road, probably about another month, just because when you do a lift, especially on these trucks with the independent front end, you wanna make sure you do it right. You wanna get tie rods, you wanna get a bunch of other little stuff to throw in there as well, a steering stabilizer, just a bunch of parts that really should go along with it if you wanna do it right. And you know, you don't wanna half-ass it. And I'm not half-assing anything on this truck. So um, I definitely wanna take my time, make sure it's right. But when I get all those parts, when I make the final decision and I have them all sorted out and delivered to the house, I'll have a definite timeline on when the lift is gonna be installed. But like I said, still gonna to stick to the same timeline that I've been saying for you know the last couple of months should be done I want, the, I want the truck to be done early to mid may so not too far out maybe like a month max until that's done but there'll be some other little updates in between now and then but anyway moving on to the big thing which is the tuner and of course i don't have it with me unfortunately i should have thrown it in the truck but it's just the little yeah, it's not in there, but um, yeah, it's just a little handheld tuner. What I went with was the AutoCal V2 tuned by ATP Trucks of ATP Trucks, uh, ATP Performance, I believe, .com, whatever it is, Advanced Truck Perfor Adrenaline Truck Performance. I don't know. I'll put the link in the description below. But anyway, so that was tuned by Idaho Rob. His name is Rob Collins or Collins. God, I should have looked this stuff up before I made a video. But anyway, they did a fantastic job. And actually what I did was I installed the tune about five days ago when I first got it because I wanted to drive the truck for a little while and so I could give you guys a good idea of what I really thought of it, give a little review of it. And let's cut to the install of the first install video of the tune right now. All right, so we're going to go ahead and actually tune the truck. And there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, the route that I went is I just had the tunes preloaded onto this so it's really easy just plug and play but you can do a bunch of different stuff you can actually build your own tunes you can have it switched out of course you can uh, have them email you tunes and then you just buy this and then you simply you know download the program and then download the tunes onto this couple of different ways but I just did it the most simple way to start out where the tunes are preloaded on this which is gonna go ahead and plug it into the truck and I wanted to explain really quick also it does come with directions but I've seen a lot of them that don't come with directions so we're gonna go over here in the video but this is the DSP5 switch and the way this works is you actually wire this to your ECU and then you can just turn this knob and switch tunes on the fly so basically you don't have to reload any tunes you just turn this uh, of course you do recommend that the truck is turned off but basically uh, the tune file on here has five different settings you have your optimized stock you have your optimized tow um, performance econ and then I think a race tune it's it's five things I'm um, actually I think the little note here is on the back 
Yes, it is the note that they wrote me. Yeah, so optimized stock, heavy toe, light toe, 70 horsepower, and 90 horsepower. Uh, the one that I'm going with uh, to, for now is just the optimized stock because I don't have this installed yet. So it's going to default to the the first option, which is your optimized your optimized stock tune. Um, but I am going to wire this at some point, and then you can turn it uh, through obviously numbers one through five to select which one you actually want to go with. And the way this works is it just switches the voltage. Um, so it's a really simple thing. It doesn't. It takes about an hour to install, um, which I'm going to do at some point down the line. But anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing tuned up. So first thing we're going to do is just put the key in and turn it to the run ignition. So two clicks over, turn the radio off. Then we'll go ahead and plug in the auto cal. Just really simply plugs into your OBD2 port. Simple as that. All right, so you can see, you can also, of course, read and check all your codes and everything like that. But we're going to scroll down to read one. We go press OK then just let that get to 100% and make sure it's not interrupted you'll see all the lights and everything on the dash illuminate as well all right so it takes a little while it takes about I'd say at least seven minutes so if you're doing this and you're wondering why it's taking a little while totally normal don't worry about it so now this what what we just did there was save the stock ECU uh, the stock tune essentially to the auto cow now we're gonna go ahead and upload the aftermarket tunes that we've been supplied you can see it just says ignition off now so just follow the directions there on the auto cow turn this off and you just press ok and you wait for 15 seconds And we'll go ahead and put the key back in the truck to the run position. And then we're going to scroll down to full one to download the full tune. And you don't want to stop at any of these programs. You want to go all the way down to full one so that you get all five of the tunes and everything. And make sure it's all good to go. Just press OK. And then it will ask if you want to license the ECU. So that means that this tuner can only be used with this truck. And press OK. Just go ahead and give this a couple of minutes as well. Probably going to take about the same amount of time. Let it get to 100% and then we'll see what it says from there. All right, so it's all done flashing. We'll go ahead and turn off the truck again. And then it's all finished up and it's as easy as that. So one of the reasons why I wanted to make this video is just to kind of show, you know, you can use the tune without having installed this first because that's what was one of my concerns. You know, I wanted to get the tune on the truck and make sure that it's running good, get rid of the check engine light, which I did have once the EGR delete was installed. Um, I didn't before with the other stuff, but I wanted to make sure that the truck was you know, running good, running 100%, but I didn't have this installed yet. So it's nice to know that you can run with the optimized stock tune because that's what it will default to uh, when you install the, uh, the when you flash the tune onto the truck so it'll default to optimize stock and the truck will be running good without having previously installed your dsp5 switch all right so as you can hear the truck is now running and of course no check engine light anymore got rid of that and the truck is running really good just wanted to make sure that it turned on okay and it certainly sounds very good and i definitely can't wait to get this bad boy out on the road and see what this new tune is like so you saw the tune being installed there. And like I said, I was a complete newbie with it, had no idea, and it was really easy. It took about, well, in video, it took like three minutes. And I was filming, so I had to you know, mess with the camera too. So it doesn't take long at all. Definitely not something that's difficult. And what can I say about the tune after driving it for a few days? Well, I can honestly say it is a night and day difference. And I see why everybody rants and raves about it because it's it really, it's just a huge difference. It, it makes it feel, I always, you know, heard people on forums and everything so oh is it like a different truck and I was like yeah I'm sure it does but honestly it does feel like a different truck and the other stupid thing that people say is like oh you know it wakes it up and the truck feels alive and uh and that's a really like silly thing to say but it really actually captures the feeling pretty well like you know as car people you know we want a vehicle to behave a little bit differently than the average person wants their vehicle to drive and we want it to be a little bit more aggressive and that's how it feels you know the truck is responsive it really behaves the way you want it to like you don't have to mash the throttle all the way to the floor to get it to accelerate and the allison transmission is actually an adaptive system as well so when the transmission is tuned it relearns you know when to shift and all that kind of stuff and it really is like tailor-made to the way you drive so it's awesome like it's 
it's just incredible. And even on a stock truck, I'm sure it would make an awesome difference. Everything's different, the throttle response. And of course this truck, not that it's heavily modified or anything, just, you know, some little basic stuff, but it made a huge difference. And of course now we're talking at well over 600 pound feet of torque, uh, probably over 400 horsepower or close to 400 horsepower. So, um, you know, I mean, it's a big heavy truck, but honestly it's no slouch either. <laughs> Unloaded, not carrying anything. Um, and it just, it really, the difference is night and day. And what I want to do, of course, is uh, drive it around for a few weeks and try to get an idea because you're supposed to get like two or three more miles per gallon. Now, I will say that I've already been averaging close to 20 in this, which I think is fantastic. You know, I honestly, that's great. Um, you can't hope for any better than 20 miles per gallon in a three quarter ton truck, but um, you know, we'll see. So I don't, I don't know if I can really hope to get much better than that, but if I could get another two or three, that'd be awesome. So we'll see, I'll give it a couple weeks, uh, go through a couple tanks of gas and really get an idea if the fuel economy has actually improved or not. All right, so that is gonna pretty much do it for the truck update video. And like I said, I will put a link to that other video in the description in case you wanna check out all the links for the engine modifications and stuff like that. But I really hope you guys enjoyed. I'm loving the truck, it's awesome. And like I said, with the tune, feels like a different truck and it's awesome just driving it around and actually feeling the power of 600 pound feet of torque but anyway as always thank you guys so much for watching always appreciate it if you're stopping in for the first time please subscribe and take care have a fantastic day